I don't think you could fit me. two Glocks in your pockets. That was a slim cut khaki. There yeah, was, was no way that we was, were fitting yeah. two Glocks. Well, hey there, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Hi, I'm Jodie Comer. Hi there, I'm Sean Levy, and we're going to be breaking down the scene from our new film, Free Guy. This is inside a stash house, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a scene, it's kind of an action scene, right, Jody? I feel like you trained for quite a while to get this choreography down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is definitely the most I've ever worked with a, with a stunt department, which was so insightful and just getting to see how meticulously they work. This was over a few days, wasn't it? Did we shoot this over like two or three days? This scene took us 61 days. To yeah, shoot. it wasn't quite <laughs> yeah, that was it. Like, I that missed was, up a couple. I, I want to say it was four or five. And uh, and it, it's, it's a scene that kind of, in a way, it encapsulates a lot of what we tried to do in the movie in general, which is a real mixture of action and comedy and uh, characters that you root for. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that was not me. That was my incredible stunt double, Haley Wright. Like, I am not taking credit for that. Um, she was phenomenal. I mean, I did as much as I possibly, possibly could. Um, that was kind of like really important to me to kind of throw myself into that. But that that was was Haley. Um, I can't lie. <laughs> I can't lie. The, the, well, well I, Jody did a big jump. Then it's Haley mm. doing the flip, and then Jody was kind of straddling Ryan on the fake motorcycle on the mo and basically yeah, was like three, two, landing. one, drop. So Jody <laughs> sold the landing. I mean, you stuck that landing, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, <And> Sean. <laughs> Is that a Glock in your pocket? No. What? It's two Glocks. Oh. I remember this Glock in your pocket. This was an example where there was a version of the joke in the script, and then I think Ryan rewrote it, and then I rewrote Ryan, and then Ryan rewrote me, and it evolved into this two Glocks. And uh, But as Ryan and Jody can tell you, there was no part of the scene that I personally enjoyed more. Every take, when Jody reaches to grab the gun, and Ryan does this kind of, go, oh, kind of, <laughs> he does his reaction. <laughs> It's so silly. It's so little boy dumb. And it made me laugh every single take. This is my first film and everything about it was so overwhelming and spectacular. And I, I remember coming to that and thinking, God, how are we going to do it? And we were in the stash house and there was a kind of stationary motorbike, which was on like a device that that spinned around once we were on it, <laughs> which is just so crazy. Cause you know, when you watch it on, on the film, it looks it looks so cool. And then I, I've seen it like BTS of us on it and it's it looks like it's going super slow and it's, it's quite like, underwhelming. It, does it look kind of like, almost like a lame child's ride at an amusement yeah, park, Yeah, right? we're on the um, teacups. Yeah, like the teacups. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, so it's incredible seeing that, you know, once it's all edited together and in its kind of final form. Yeah. So generally I try and we try, we approach most scenes. I don't want to storyboard it. I don't want to plan for it. I have a sense of where I want the actors, but I want it to feel free and organic. But if there's stunts or visual effects, I want it rigorously prepared. And so I storyboarded uh, those shots. And I just remember there felt I just wanted Molotov Girl to feel like an instant classic heroine. And uh, and just her control with those guns on the bike. Basically, Guy is just trying to look around her and drive straight. But those slow motion shots, sometimes you just kind of imagine, well, what would, I always try to think, what would I want it to look like if I were in the audience? And those were the images that came to me. I wanted kind of iconic, clean frames that looked like two heroes who the world didn't even know were heroes yet. What 
I love about this scene is that it really is a showcase for Jody and her character, Molotov Girl, and her skills. And I just love that Guy sort of sits back and watches like he's sitting front row with popcorn in his hand, uh, watching the love of his life just <laughs> kick absolute ass, just turning every one of these bad guys into a fine curd cottage cheese like ass pudding. And it was so much fun to watch. And then we, we sort of set this whole thing to this Mamas and the Papas uh, song, Make, Make Your, Your Own yeah. Kind of Music. Oh, it's like, so good. Oh, That's so much fun. You know, it also, that, that reminds me, that was not in the script and there was no plan to use that song or to slow down time and have Guy watch Molotov Girl adoringly. But as we were shooting it, Ryan said to Jody and I, hey, listen to this song, is this weird? Should we like have me just watch you in a trance? And he played the song and it was weird, but it was weird, good, weird yeah. in yeah. the way that many of Ryan Reynolds' musical instincts are good and also inspired. And also another example of how we had a really good script that we worked really hard on, but then every day we just kind of tried to stay nimble enough that we could listen to new ideas and be surprised by stuff mm -hmm. that the movie kind of yeah. revealed. I don't suppose this thing can fly. <laughs> no. Jump. Wow. The vast majority of the movie was done practically. Um, and not just the sets, but almost every explosion, missile hit, plane thrower, zip line, bombs going, that was all real. So I, I do have to kind of give a huge shout out to the stunt and effects department because all those background jokes where mayhem is happening, that was really happening. And these actors and Rel had to play it completely straight and non-reactive. This particular set was built. It was uh, inspired partly by a library at my alma mater, Yale. There's a library called the Beinecke Rare Book Library. And the walls are these slabs of very thin marble. And Early on, I said to my production designer, let's have this be inspired by Beinecke Library at Yale. And uh, we built it and uh, it the whole set was there, all the vehicles were there. And to your point earlier, I'm remembering that those were like, I don't know, half a million dollar sports cars. And each one came with its owner. So that was my favorite part. Remember that? <laughs> with <joke>? the owners. <laughs> Yeah. That was my so favorite like, part. So like, we're there trying to make a movie and there's like all these rich middle-aged men who own these sports cars that cost an insane amount of money. And we're shooting like fighting and flips and God help us if something were to have touched the car and damaged it in front of its owner who yeah. was for some reason standing yeah. by me at the camera going up, be careful. My Maserati is not gonna yeah, handle yeah. gunfire well. I think all the cars had names like, you know, Grace and Phil, my my Testarossa and yeah, it was yes, just- my it, Testarossa. I'm still stuck on the fact that your, your alma mater has a library filled with rare books. I think that's amazing. I mean like- it is a it is a very fancy school. And my my alma awesome. mater has a, a library filled with old episodes of Who's the Boss. So, <laughs> you so know, I think, uh, congratulations, you 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 win. Mondays, am I right, Joe? You said it, guy. Check out Free Guy, available to watch right now. <laughs> I'm not as good as Ryan at this. You are. Nobody Just, is. Yeah. <laughs>